Hi guys, this is Andrew from The Headphone Show. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the difference between planar magnetic and dynamic driver headphones. A lot of you guys have asked me, you know, what's better, headphone A or headphone B, where one is a dynamic and the other is a planar, and they might both be very competitive in the price brackets where they sit, but really it comes down to whether or not you prefer the sonic characteristics of a planar or the sonic characteristics of a dynamic driver headphone. In fact, I think the question that I get more than anything else is whether or not the Hi-Fi Man Ananda is better than the Focal Clear. I don't have the Full count clear here at the moment, just the Allegia. Uh, but you know, you get the idea that people often want these two compared. The clear is a little bit more expensive even when on sale, but you know, for the performance that they have for their respective driver technologies, I think they do compete with one another. Now, I do want to mention that there are, of course, going to be exceptions and there are also going to be trends. And for this video, I'm focusing on the trends. There's nothing special about one technology that makes it uniquely better than the other, unless, of course, you have a preference for that technology. So you can have good headphones, you know, either way. But with that said, I do also prefer one over the other. And at the end of this video, I will let you know which one that is. Now there's all kinds of information out there on how different the designs are for each and the approach and how everything works. Uh, so just to give a quick summary for planar magnetic headphones, the diaphragm has a trace on it. And then there's a magnetic structure there, either on both sides or on just one side for the lighter ones. Uh, and this is what creates the pistonic motion there for the, for the diaphragm. Uh, with a dynamic driver, on the other hand, like these ones here, this is the uh, ADX 5000 from Audio-Technica. You can actually even see through it here. This is more of a traditional transducer design where you have a diaphragm and then a voice coil and then that is what creates the pistonic motion. You see this in loudspeakers and all over the place. Of course, with all of these, each company has their own unique way of using or implementing a transducer or designing that transducer regardless of whether it's a planar or a dynamic. So not all planar magnetic headphones are designed the same and not all dynamic driver headphones are designed design the same either. But more interesting than that, I think, is what's the difference in terms of their sonic character? Uh, and each of them has their own distinct advantages and disadvantages. So advantages for planar magnetic headphones. These will generally sound a little bit tighter, be a little bit more well-defined and have better instrument separation. They have better extension in the bass generally, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they hit harder in the bass or have more bass. It just means that they go all the way down to 20 hertz more frequently or more commonly. Whereas often open back dynamic driver headphones tend to roll off a little bit down in the, in the sub bass regions. And then in the super high end, you also get better detail retrieval. That's been my experience. Headphones like the Hi-Fi Man Susvara and LCD4 and the Abyss AV1266 TC and all of the crazy high end headphones for detail retrieval or almost all of them are planar magnetic headphones or sometimes electrostatic headphones. Uh, so, you know, there's an advantage for planars when it comes to image clarity and distinction and surgical precision and structural definition and all that stuff. And I find that this is most helpful and noticeable for music that has a lot of stuff going on and that has a lot of busy passages. You just get a better sense of separation with all of this stuff. The other unique quality is that planar magnetic headphones tend to have a certain plucked character to them. Everything sounds very tight and fast and and immediate, generally. Not everybody likes this quality, but it is one of the things that makes it recognizable as a planar, and I do also think that a lot of people enjoy that as well. So let's talk about dynamic driver headphones. The advantages of the dynamic driver headphone is that you generally get a better sense of punch and slam. And that has to do with the excursive capability of the driver. Generally, the outside of the driver is where you're gonna get the most contributing to that that excursive force. So if anybody's wondering what excursive means, that's the physical movement there of the diaphragm. You have excursive and restorative force. Excursive is it moving away from its default position and restorative is it moving back towards its default position. We often hear about, you know, playing our bass and all of this with certain headphones like the Odyssey LCD4. In fact, a lot of Odyssey headphones are like this. So there are some notable exceptions where some planars do punch very, very hard. They do slam quite hard. Uh, but I think the general trend for this is that it's tougher to get that excursive quality in planar magnetic headphones than it is in uh, dynamic driver headphones just because of the transducer design there. But I think more commonly you'll find that excursive capability, that slam and punch dynamic quality that a lot of people really enjoy. You'll find that more commonly in dynamic driver headphones, especially some of the biodynamic headphones that you'll see from ZMF or Fostex or you know any of that kind of stuff. And actually the Focal headphones uh, like the Allegia here, punch extremely hard as well. So if that's something that you really require in your headphones or you're really looking for, it's probably best to look for a highly excursive dynamic driver headphone. The other important aspect to consider with both driver types is 
how natural something sounds. I think there's a really interesting argument that says that you know dynamic driver headphones are often a little bit more natural sounding in their presentation, even though planar magnetic headphones do a better job at detail and clarity. And so if you're trying to get your music to sound as realistic as it would be if you were to hear it in real life, maybe it would be better to go for a dynamic driver headphone, even though they don't always do as good a job as the planers do for detail retrieval and clarity and instrument separation and all those qualities. But I'll leave that argument for debate because I think that's an interesting question that I'm often on one side or the other of and I don't know which uh, way I want to go on that. But in any case I did tell you that I would let you know which driver type I prefer because that question of are planar headphones better than dynamic driver headphones comes up a lot. It gets asked all the time and to me I generally do prefer the way that planars sound. Now, it's a little bit ironic that I say that because I don't actually currently own any planar magnetic headphones. Uh, these ones were provided by headphones.com and I will be doing a review of the Hi-Fi Man Ananda shortly, so stay tuned for that. But I have owned planar magnetic headphones in the past, specifically the Hi-Fi Man HE500, and I've owned some of the Mr. Speaker's headphones, and I've owned uh, other Hi-Fi Man headphones as well. I've owned Odyssey headphones. So for me, I really enjoy that plucked quality and that instrument separation that you get from a planar magnetic headphone that I haven't heard done the same way yet on a dynamic driver headphone as well. And so for my preference, if you're comparing two headphones that are around the same price range, that are both really, really good headphones for their frequency response and tonality, I will tend to prefer the planar magnetic headphone. So for example, comparing the Focal Utopia to the Hi-Fi Man Susvara, I prefer the Susvara. And I think I prefer, you know, all those other planar magnetic headphones in that range as well, even though I find the Utopia to be more comfortable and ultimately the more, you know, usable headphone for longer periods of time. The only real major drawbacks for planar magnetic headphones, apart from the fact that they sound like planar magnetic headphones, if you think that's a bad thing, is that it's really difficult to close off a planar magnetic headphone and get the frequency response to be where you want it to be. So far, there really haven't been that many flagship closed back planars, while dynamic driver headphones, you do have quite a bit of selection there for uh, high-end closed back ones. There's the Focal Stelia, the ZMF Verite Closed. I know there's some from Sony, there's Fostex, there's Denon. You, know, you can find a lot of closed back high-end headphones there. But for planar magnetic headphones, you really don't have much choice there. And that doesn't mean that companies aren't trying. Odyssey's definitely tried to do a few closed back planar magnetic headphones. And Dan Clark Audio is making closed back planar magnetic headphones. Um, so they do exist, it's just that the selection isn't as much as there is with dynamic driver headphones. So that's, that's kind of a trade-off there. Uh, but for open back, I think really it comes down to which characteristics, which sonic characteristics do you value the most? Do you care about instrument separation and isolation and image distinction, image clarity, detail retrieval, or do you care about dynamic impact, punch and slam, even distribution of imaging, uh, natural timbre? Although I don't think that either of these are particularly natural in their timbre, but you can imagine you know, a lot of ZMF headphones, for example, those are the dynamic ones. They are a little bit more natural in timbre as well. So far, I haven't really heard a planar magnetic headphone that's able to do the same thing as many of those. So, uh, so it, that is a bit of a trade-off there. Uh, but yeah, it really comes down to what sonic features or characteristics you are requiring or you prefer. Uh, but in any case, uh, that does it for this video. If you guys like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next one.